What's the difference between this hammer and this one? And for that matter, which one should you buy and use? Over the years, I've looked in a lot of DIYers toolboxes and seen this, the curved claw hammer. Every homeowner seems to have one. But on construction job sites, you'll almost never see a pro using one. Instead, they use this, the rip claw hammer. It's all I've really used for the last 20 years, and it's the one that I choose to keep in my tool belt. So today, I'm gonna to discuss the difference between these two tools, and hopefully it'll help you decide which one you need if you're in the market for a hammer. And that's coming up next on The Amos Carpenter Show. I'll say off the bat that there is a world of detail when it comes to hammers. And I may do a comprehensive video someday on the dozens of types available. But for the newcomer just beginning to tackle construction work, I think you have to start with the discussion of the claw. Because the claw actually dictates a lot of other things about the hammer. So once again, there are these two main types. The curved claw, or standard claw, and then you have the rip claw, sometimes called the straight claw. The difference is pretty obvious. The standard claw has a more pronounced curve to it. Some fold down even more drastically than others and look sort of stubby as a result. The rip claw, on the other hand, has a flatter profile along the top. The claw is closer to 90 degrees to the handle, but with a very soft taper. So why do these two different types exist? Basically, they're built to excel at different functions. The standard claw is best suited for pulling out nails. The curved head creates a very smooth fulcrum with a lot of travel. It's also gentler on the surface you're prying, so it doesn't cause as much visible damage. The straight claw, on the other hand, is a bit clumsier at nail pulling. It basically levers off the top and the head. That's your fulcrum. This requires more hard pressure when prying, and therefore causes more damage to your prying surface. So why would you choose the rip claw over the curved, and why would I recommend it? Really, it's because nail pulling is just one function of a hammer. There are many other functions to be considered, and the rip claw excels at all of them. A hammer is like an indestructible extension of your hand. It lets you apply a lot of pressure and force where you need it with surprising accuracy. And this is useful in both phases of serious work, construction and demolition. Every single job, no matter what, is gonna require both phases. Even a new house build is gonna require some light demolition along the way. And remodels and additions involve heavy demolition up front where the house is basically broken down to be rebuilt. Everything from pulling up siding and trim to breaking apart old framing. The rip claw is drastically superior to the curved claw for anything demolition related. The straight flat claw is like a pick. It has the perfect angle for demo. You can direct it into cracks and crevices and either blast things apart with force or gradually pry things apart with leverage. And you can even use it like an ax splitting lumber into pieces with it. Often on job sites, I won't back fasteners out. I'll just split lumber along the grain so it lets the fastener go. Then I can pull or break nails at my leisure. The curved claw is terrible for this stuff. The downward pointing claw gives you very little angle of approach. It's hard to embed the claw while driving forward in a natural motion. And for some tighter crevices, there's no way to get the claw in at all. And you might say maybe standards are better for driving nails then, but that's not necessarily true either. I've always found that the rip claw excels at nail driving too. Why? Because rip claws tend to be heavier. More weight in the hammerhead creates more swinging force. Each hammer stroke will punch a nail deeper, so you need fewer strokes. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to go overboard with weight. Framing hammers are almost always rip claw, and they tend to be 22 ounces and upwards, but that is way more weight than the average DIYer needs. I've found that 16 ounces is really the best average weight. My old Vaughn is 16 ounces, and it handles everything that I throw at it. Conversely, this beautiful S-Wing is 20 ounces, and while I may use it a lot for framing heavy jobs and deck work, it may be overkill for general work. 16 ounces is just the bare minimum for effectiveness. And every rip claw hammer you come across is going to have that or more, whereas tons of curved claw hammers come in these rinky-dink weights, like 10 ounces. They get marketed towards homeowners and they look unintimidating, but they're so ineffective, they're almost useless for driving anything but little trim nails. I say do yourself a favor. Get a 16 ounce rip claw. You can still drive trim nails and picture nails with it. I do it all the time. But you can also drive framing nails and common nails. And you can break things up around the house and tackle projects more efficiently. Yes, curved claws are better at pulling up nails with little damage. But rip claws really work just as well if you slip a thin piece of wood beneath the head. It saves your surface and creates a little more leverage. And if the surface doesn't matter, just rotate the hammer sideways. 
This is a very effective prying method with rip claws, and you can work stubborn nails from both sides this way in an alternating pattern. Some finished carpenters and trim installers may still prefer curved claw for finished nails, but nearly every tradesperson I know keeps their rip claw on hand at all times. It's just a more serious tool. I bring all this up now because I'm finally gonna cover what I keep in my tool belt next week. A lot of people have asked for that video. But I wanted to start with this because hammers, along with tape measures, are your most essential tools. And the 16 ounce rip claw for the vast majority of construction work is the essential hammer. Anyways, that's my take on it. What do you think? Do you use rip claws too? Or do you prefer standard claws for some reason I didn't mention? Let me hear about it down in the comments. I'm gonna link a bunch of hammers down below. Feel free to shop those links. And remember that when you do, we receive a small commission at no extra charge to you. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.